Jesus asked his disciples one time, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And upon this rock, I will build my church. For more than 2,000 years, Christ has been building His church. What is the church? Well, the church is not a building. The church is the body of Christ, community of all true believers in Jesus Christ. A group of people who have seen the light. It's comprised of all who have repented of their sins and believed in Jesus. Devoted to the disciples' teaching, to fellowship, to prayer, to one another. They called out assembly. God's program for reaching the world for Christ a group of believers that are sent out by God into the community and into the world. It's a family. Believers, those who have been saved. Making disciples. And the common goal of worshiping and growing in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Calvary Community Church, a ministry that has been used by God to transform countless lives with the gospel. Yet like so many others before us, God used humble beginnings and simple faithfulness to build His kingdom. On June 10th, 1973, five people met in the home of Roy and Alice Godwin, and a new branch of Christ's Church was born. After their organizational meeting with 18 charter members, the young church met for several years in rented buildings. Until, with much prayer and the provision of God, the church met for the first time in their own building on First and Superior in 1979. I'm Terry Strode, and I've been going to Calvary for 44 years. And I'm Julie Strode, and it's been a beat about that long. Um, it's kind of ironic we're in this room uh, doing this interview in the, uh, the Royal Room because this is where church was for us for way back. My parents came here and I came as a teenager and so it kind of all started in this, in this room which seems small now but it didn't seem so small back then. The focus of the church was to minister to the entire family. Pastor Carl preached to the adults and his wife Gail taught the children. The church also purchased their first bus to help with the outreach to the children in the community. Roy Godwin basically and me did a bus route on Saturdays. Me and Roy went around the neighborhood and knocked doors and Gail answered door and she said that her kid would come to church tomorrow on Sunday. Ten years after that, I get a I get a letter in the mail from her and it was saying that she was so glad that I took the time to make a second effort to come back around and pick her up because it changed her life. She got saved with the bus ministry. Almost 17 years ago now, and looked for a good Bible teaching church. And God led, led Arnie and me here. I've had the privilege of working on the bus route almost from the beginning of the time when I came here. I think the one thing that has brought me close to the Lord, closer to Him, uh, has been working with the children and also teaching Sunday school. And there's no a greater privilege than to lead a child to Christ and then to, to see them grow in Him. Since its founding, reaching the next generation for Christ has been the passion of Calvary, as was seen with the establishment of thriving Awana programs as early as 1978. 
1980, the outreach to children was taken beyond Sunday school with the founding of Parkview Christian School and the subsequent God-given victories in the realm of Christian education. We got involved in Awanas because our kids were in Awanas, basically, right? Yeah, and it looked, it looked different because um, the building was so different. And so they had this big game room. It was downstairs. Downstairs. That, it was a little one, really. When yeah, it really was that. pretty little. <laughs> we had some great leaders. I mean, dedicated leaders you that had the ran. Beckers and the Agonauts. And, and bosses. bosses. And, well, I look back and I just think of the generations that have been impacted. It was my parents, and then it was us, mm -hmm. and then it was now our kids dedicated here. Um, went to Awanas, all through Awanas here. They were baptized here. Baptized here. They were saved through yep. the ministry here. Through the years, as we started our first building project, every time Pastor would talk about building, I just cringe because uh, I knew that I was going to get laid off. And one time it wouldn't have been so bad, but this happened to me three different times. And I know it was the Lord's will because we had a chance to do the Lord's work by working on the building each and every time. Very soon after the construction of the first building, the need was felt to continue to expand. And once more, God provided. In 1984, the first worship center was completed. Then in 1990, a 10-year-old prayer was answered. And the Family Life Center was constructed, not only for the use of Parkview, but for the whole community to come and experience the love of Christ. One of the things that I learned early on, even in conversations with Pastor Carl before agreeing to move here, was how much that prayer was a part of the ministry here at Calvary. I thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to help lead the prayer partner ministry it had already begun when I came here in 2005, but that's always been an exciting part of things as we have people that have come every Sunday morning uh, to pray, to pray for the leadership, to pray for the Sunday morning services and that God's will would be done. The prayer ministry is another place where I feel like I've grown a lot. We are prayer partners and so we go to prayer every month for um, with Pastor Steve now and it used to be um, I prayed a lot with Lisa Larson and, and a group of ladies and um, I have developed a passion for prayer through serving um, in that way. I've learned the power of prayer. Pastor Carl used to say it's it's the, the gas and oil of the church's engine is prayer. Those were the things that that I learned here that I merely paid lip service to before. The focus on prayer in that group is tremendous. Knowing that all those people have this relationship with Christ that allows them to go to his throne and, and pray for you and to show that they really care. We used to joke that sometimes our, our prayer time at Grand People would be three-fourths of the class. And that's a good thing. And um, we look back on that and we are glad that we had that opportunity to really pray together with so many of those people. And the pastor came to our house and, and uh, led us to Christ. We have a great church here at Calvary Community. And uh, more than that, we have a dedicated leader, Pastor Godwin. Calvary Community Church has really been a, a blessing in our lives. I don't know where we've been without the church and the church family and especially our pastor. Uh, he, he just, the Lord has a way of cleaning up your lives whether you want him to or not. And he, he leads you if you let him and, and he has a way of making you let him. One of the bittersweet parts of being that pastor is seeing again over the past 23 years of being here in church and and, and ministering to um, the grand people is seeing again these senior saints 
um, who are leading and serving and just these beautiful examples of what it means to be part of the church, part of the body of Christ. Whether it was um, Don and Maxine Drevo and or recently here um, Marv Mills or um, so many, uh, Fred Potts, um, you know, I think of Larry Frost. We stand on the shoulders of giants, giants of the faith. Um, Fred Potts, you know, Pastor John Brooks, oh, such a great man. Uh, Helen Finch, you know, those were the ones that I knew and there were many that, that came before me that I did not have the privilege of knowing. You know, I used to always <laughs> talk about Kathy Francisco this dear sweet lady um, who was probably one of the one one of the older members here of our church who went home to be with the Lord um, several years ago but she was until the very end a greeter here um, at the main door and when you came into church um, there was Kathy with this big smile on her face um, and greeting people and welcoming people and loving on people. Standing on the faithfulness of those who came before and the always present grace of God, Calvary experienced tremendous growth. And with the growth came the hiring of additional pastoral staff to faithfully steward the flock that God had given. So Calvary had good worship all the time. You know, I mean, Pastor Carl was really smart because in Bible college, he found a piano player to fall in love with and marry. And so he had music covered for his church. <laughs> and Gail played the piano here for many, many, many years. And when I came, they had just made a decision to change the music because they were basically just using hymns. They had a red hymnal and they used a piano and organ and that was it. In the mid-90s, they decided to change their music and become more contemporary. And so they didn't have a band, and so they decided to use CDs. Uh, they had a guy named Tom Ham, who had a worship team. They had really, some really good singers, and they sang along with CDs on Sunday morning. We were off the CDs in less than a month. I had a piano player. There was an eighth grade girl who played the drums. And then another guy who played the bass, and I said, okay, that's a band. We have three instruments, here we go. My name is Dominic Luch, and this is my wife, Shauncee Luch, and we have been going to Calvary for about four years now. Being a part of the worship ministry here has challenged me to think um, long and hard about what the music should look like in church. Oh, We've yeah. had a lot of conversations about different songs. It's been really good for us because we're extremely opinionated. <laughs> and our, but the opinions um, have even but yeah, shifted our opinions back have... and forth. You know, I once thought this, and then, and then Pastor Mitch would challenge my thinking, and he's like, "But did you think about this?" It's been a good challenge to um, for us to grow in that area. Christmas with Calvary started our very first year, 2000 here, and proved to be just a very effective way to invite people into Calvary. I specifically remember that first year that we were gathering people to be in the cast. And I remember Gail Godwin was involved, of course, uh, but Pastor Steve jumped in and Pastor Matt jumped in and many people who just wanted to see it work. The first musical that we ever did here was Four Tickets to Christmas. It turned out to be super fun. I always saw God working really powerfully through Christmas with Calvary. Probably one of the low points for Christmas with Calvary happened, I believe it was 2003, where we actually canceled it. We started, we auditioned, we started rehearsals, and it was just falling apart. And we prayed and prayed, and we really believed that God just wanted us not to have it that year. Then, I believe it was 10 years later, we pulled out the same musical. It was a musical called Word on the Street. And that was the show where we saw the most conversions. More people accepted Christ at the 2013 Christmas with Calvary, which was Word on the Street, than any of the others that we had had. Working with those people was such a joy. Those are 
probably my most fond memories that I've had here at Calvary is, is getting to work so closely with all those great people. One of the things I personally remember the most from the early 2000s was the Mothers of Preschoolers or MOPS ministry. Calvary was such a young church then. Um, the hardest thing was finding retired women to help. When Calvary started MOPS, I was asked to join the steering team. I specifically remember one incident after our daughter was born and she was in the NICU. One of the ladies from MOPS snuck over to my house and cleaned my house. And she denied it for a long time, but I know it was her. It was one of the best gifts about being part of a group that truly seeks to serve one another. MOPS was a ministry that really developed women. And it was beautiful to watch women step into leadership through the ministry of MOPS. Debbie Sunderman was on the first leadership team. Amy Rogers was a discussion group leader. Tori Ryan, and it was such a beautiful group of women who were young, fairly young in their faith, but learning more about Jesus by ministering to others. Having that opportunity um, to, to lead and disciple men uh, was a great, uh, it was really exciting for me. Um, and seeing men grow, um, a lot of the guys that came to Calvary about the same time I did, and now I, I look at that, and so many of those guys um, are in leadership now here, in deacons and other um, aspects of the ministry here at Calvary. The first Wednesday night we had eight kids, and then the next week I think we had 16 or 17, and the next week we had 29, and then by the fall of the year, uh, come October, we actually had 100 kids at a youth event on a Wednesday night. My name is Terry Meyer. I've been coming to Calvary since 1991. I found myself uh, leading this group and I didn't take it seriously. And, and the group of 15 young men dwindled down to one and that young man graduated. So in essence, I taught my way out of the ministry. Pastor Steve came back uh, about a year after that and asked me if I would be willing to try it again. And, I said to myself, I made a promise to myself and the young men that I would soon teach that I was gonna take it a lot more seriously. I wanted to make sure that the Bible was, was real, uh, not just a compilation of old stories, that it was applicable to your life. I think what God was teaching me through my ministry was that if you're faithful and obedient, God will provide. Um, if he can use someone like me, to do a youth ministry, he can use anybody in any situation. God is faithful and he equipped me uh, to serve in that capacity for, for 20 years. When young people approach me later in adulthood, young people that maybe I, I didn't think I got through to, and tell me the lessons that they learned, it just goes to show you that you're faithful to sow the Word of God as seed and that it will take root and grow and that it will not return void. Sometimes we, we may not see that in the time frame that we would like to see it, but God will be faithful. When I started in the children's ministry, we actually met in this room that's behind me, um, and they had good teaching. We had good speakers. When I took over, we started changing some of the things. We didn't change. What was most important was the teaching of the Bible stories, but we started changing some of the method. And you know, they did puppets, and we, we continued to do puppets. We also started to add dramas. A little later on, the question got up, well, what are we gonna do for actors for, for the skits? And I said, well, I can act. And I remember Shane looking at me like, what, are you crazy? Um, and so he- I thought he, that too. Yeah, he, he took me up <laughs> on it. And I, I do fit in that way. I mean, we're all crazy down there. Yeah, I had such a great experience uh, that first time in Summer Spectacular, just acting, being on the drama team, that uh, it, it really drew me to that ministry. We want them to learn God's, God's word, love God's word, or cherish it there in their hearts, or, remember it and memorize it and then live it and we came that first sunday and nick was just three and we took nick down to grandma frida's class the very first sunday and we lived about an hour away from church and after we picked him up 
he did not stop talking the entire way home. It was all about Jesus. And then Jesus did this, and Jesus did that. And let me tell you about Jesus. And Scott and I looked at each other and we thought, if one Sunday with Grandma Frida can have that much of an impact on our three-year-old, then this church is a great place to be. Uh, over the years, I've seen God working again and again and bringing volunteers together, becoming a family of volunteers. And that's why the, we've had so many of our uh, servants, our volunteers serving, you know, 10, 15, 20 years because we've got that family atmosphere. But we also have a heart for these kids and, and really being able to teach God's words. It's not about what we're doing on the stage. It's the kids, it's the parents, it's the families that they would feel the love of Christ. One of the things also that I was involved in very early on in my days here was the new campaign to build on our church. I often joked with Pastor Carl that he did not quite let me in on something. I was only here for a few weeks, and one day in his office, he unveiled to me some preliminary architectural plans and said, hey, did I mention to you that I need your leadership to help me? We're about to get into a building campaign. And no, he didn't quite mention that to me before my taking the job. Following the Forward by Faith campaign, Calvary completed the construction of the latest building expansion which God has already used for the expansion of His kingdom. Well, here we are, 50 years. Can you believe it? Welcome to Calvary Jubilee Celebration, 50 years of ministry. Somebody said, uh, I, I thought it would take longer to get old, <laughs> but uh, the years have slipped by. And here we are. Jesus said, I will build my church. That's so significant. If you were to say to me, Pastor Carl, what is God doing today? He is building his church. Well, what is the definition of a church? Dr. Elmer Town's definition that he gave us when we were at Liberty University. Here's his definition. The church is an organized body of baptized believers in whom Christ dwells under the discipline of the word of God. If there was a a real key to our work, it was obviously that God hears and answers prayer. We are just sinners saved by grace. We still struggle to live right for God. I'm just a PK, a plumber's kid. <laughs> and, and you know what? God hears and answers prayer. I have a wonderful heritage of praying people. When Carl Kinsler died, Alma put his Bible in a box and mailed it to me. I know they prayed for me for many years. Many of the wonderful fruit we see here at Calvary was because of the prayers of people like that. I had four deacons at that time, and my dad was gone for a year and a half up in Pudo Bay to work on the pipeline. And so he became my deacon chairman, and he was like a second dad to me. One day I asked him, I said, Russell, you came for the first time on Wednesday night. And, and, and I was so excited that you came come back. I said, what made you come back? And I was hoping he would say, well, you know, it was your great Bible teaching or it was your great preaching. You know what he said? He said, when we had prayer on that Wednesday night and your wife prayed, something happened to me. It is life transformation. It is not building. It is not land. It's the greatest sign of God's blessing has changed lives. It's all about Jesus. It's all about a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not a religion. It's not just believe in a creed. It is a relationship with a person. It is about bringing people to know Jesus, helping people know God, find freedom, and find His purpose for their lives. Well, I count it an honor to have been handed the baton uh, from a faithful man. Uh, with that comes a, a great responsibility. We stand on the shoulders of giants, giants of the faith. So to me, to honor their legacy, we continue what, what they, they did. And that is, they were led by Pastor Carl to preach the gospel, to preach the, the word of God, to proclaim to a community that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one goes to heaven except by him. This is the miracle of Calvary Community Church. It is an answer to prayer, 
It has been wonderful 50 years seeing God's hand, and we are thankful. He has heard and answered our prayers. Oh, that we would have an unshakable confidence that we serve a God who hears and answers prayer. And that we would say with George Beverly Shea, I would rather have Jesus than anything.